Hi, and welcome to episode 16 of the Tutorial Sect. I'm Icon, and today we will do the following things. We're going to explore Wyvern Pool together, because Wyvern Pool is a very, very important area for your career, and yields some of the best materials that you can get for metal cultivation. How? It's an, it's an absolutely exciting story, and we're going to uncover it. Beyond that, I'm not too sure what we're going to do in detail in today's episode. I will definitely dive a wee bit deeper into our uh, into our sect progression here. We still need a lot of uh, things to be done, but overall we are now in a phase of the game where it grows more and more important to expand. And expansions are part two of today's episode. So last time I forgot to put up a storage here. So here. I want to have this storage exclusively for fabrics. So all the fabrics we create will be stored in there. So we have a passerby who's waiting for help. Well, this guy wants to know what we're doing here. We could also recruit him if we want to, but we're not gonna. The auction is starting, but without any money. What should we do? All right, so let's check out. The Purple Cloud Temple is not at 100% yet. Too bad. So when I say expansion, I'm exclusively talking about <sighs> agencies. <laughs> just lost the word. Agencies are the next thing that I want to create more. We're going to ignore the city agencies for now because it's way more interesting to grow uh, onto these uh, agencies that have these flag icons. I don't know what you should call them, but overall they are uh, resource producing agencies. I want to start out with riverbank plains because they have a plentiful production of wheat which is exactly what we're going to need. So I just realized that Ming Li is such an awesome person to be sent, so we're gonna do that. The only thing I don't want to do right now is, uh, I don't want to send them away with only 200, with less than 100 spirit stones. So mm. this is a wee bit difficult because I do want to, do this uh, expansion as quick as possible. Yeah, whatever. We'll have to do this. We're not going to get any uh, extra tutorial shrine. Let's go for a tutorial temple this time. How about that? Yeah, we don't have any uh, resources for the poor guy. But that's just as it is. To get more resources, I'll produce a I'll build up a agency in the Great Desert too because the Great Desert has one big uh, bonus you can harvest spirit stones there so we're going to bring Zhuang Zhuang Lo over there she has decent social and battle skills and that's all we need for now here we go boom spirit the money shrine it's the money shrine all right okay I'll not be like that. The... Okay. Okay. And because after all, money is edible here. I didn't come up with this idea. They did. <laughs> all right. Jokes aside, we now have expansions going on. Two people expanding towards two new uh, places. So we should also try and get ourselves some new disciples there. Ruji and is already on adventure mode again. We still have Hellion and Bangju. These two guys are insanely powerful, but not yet. So I want to check out if there's anybody here in my ranks who I want to promote a, a little bit more. Chi sends 28, 34, 26. Well, they're not exactly outstanding, but they're also not exactly bad. I always try to prefer cultivation for inner disciplehood. I try to prefer people with a decent luck rating because luck is just uh, so multifunctional. So uh, that a super multifunctional uh, that 
And, well, okay. Let's put up a new roof piece over here. Do we have enough offcuts? Yes, we do. Here's the mushroom farm, and the mushroom farm doesn't work without a roof above it. So, our cotton farm is also getting there. Yeah, we're going to we're going to talk about the cotton farm today. He, he, he wants to eat cinnabar. Yeah, let the dog eat whatever he wants to eat, as long as it is uh, something expandable. I know I keep saying that, but can't say it often enough because it all gives him just some random stat bonuses. And why wouldn't you want that? So meat, pork growth. I want chi growth because there's no chi growth right now. He needs mushrooms for that. Uh, good thing that we're growing mushrooms soon. Alright. Yeah, there my abbot people get events where I could use spirit stones if I only had some. We would get some uh, followers to begin with if I had spirit stones there, but we can change it for now. So, Mount South slowly gathering belief. And City of Abundance is growing too. We're going to do one thing today. I was talking about that the last time. So Glimmer Cave here, I get a, uh, a hint that this is a fire elemental place. And uh, I think Gem Spring Cave here. Oh no, that's the Earth one. Uh, don't I have an er a Earth type area here? Phoenix Cliff. Oh no. Well, okay. We don't have a, medita a meditation spot available right now. Too bad. Okay. So there are places where you just can go cultivating and gather inspiration and stuff. But, well, doesn't seem like we can do this this time. Because I have um, made up my mind, I want to promote Helian Hua at the end of this year's winter. I want to try and make myself the first halfway decent golden core. So I usually make one crappy golden core, one halfway decent golden core, and from then on I try to push out uh, to push and do the best I can get I can. So oh yeah, there's the thing we did last episode. Haha, -ha, yeah. So we did gather up a a primordial symbols law scroll the last time. Let's examine that. So, we acquired the Primordial Symbols Law. Boom. That's an entirely new law. And if you check it out, it also comes with all these skills. And that's why acquiring Supreme Laws is so powerful. We now have access to all these extra skills. And if we check this out, it's a Comprehensive Book of Talismans. And here is a Max G modifier. Plus 1000. And here's more Talismans. And check out that these are multi-level skills. Those little red bubbles below the icons mean that we can learn these skills several times. So that means to really truly learn all the available talismans, you need to main this uh, law with somebody. Also powerful is that we learn Chi Barrier skills here. I don't need these yet, but we will need them once we face tribulations. Basically, barrier is armor. The more barrier you have, the harder it is to, to hurt your chi pool. So, here's more talismans, adventure fly speed bonus, and this is uh, also a very powerful technique, technique yielding subspirits, but since we don't have used the subspirits yet, I don't want to talk about that too much. Overall, this law is mostly important for its very cheap max chi modifier, and the plethora of different uh, talismans it brings into your sect. Also, it gives me a new opportunity. Ooh, we found scrolls. We got a, us a new opportunity to transcribe a law, which brings Hellion some new uh, opportunity to learn skills. Something I do like as well. All right. Abbott is being robbed. For some reason, you can... Uh, Divert robbery with spirit stones. Well, I guess you give them money and they leave you alone or something like that. I don't know. So, this time Zuruji brought us home some manuals. I have already talked about that. 
but you get some randomly crafted uh, skills here sometimes. Slightly increases artifact trail length. This is a wonderful example for crap useless items. This is absolutely useless uh, stat. You don't want that. The other one slightly increases stamina acquisition rate. Usually you won't be studying that. Most of these random things are rather debatable. But first, first of all, you can always smelt these items if you don't want them. So that's what we're going to do. They're just going to be destroyed. And if they have enough chi inside them, you also get some uh, spirit stone. But uh, usually the smelt order is what, you, what I like to use to just destroy things that have no real use here. So, City of Abundance has an Earthquake too now. So, wow. Let's go for a Disaster Relief there as well. And we're we got to be sending our Golden Core Cultivator there too. So that's a rather rare opportunity to, to have that. Oh boy, we're not powerful enough yet. Oh no. So... And we found Lucian Village, so I'm pretty sure that this was the last spot to be uncovered, so Zurushi can go home now. Lucian Village is a place where we can gather jade and stone essences, which is quite wonderful. So, this is really bad when that happens. If you are not able to uh, to help a disaster, to help out a disaster completely. You only lose stuff out of that. The town g grows more unstable and, well... But the real sad thing there is usually you can only save these towns when you have a primordial spirit cultivator because you can only send one cultivator once for disaster relief. So... I guess also City of Abundance will be a lost case but I'll have to try nevertheless. After you have reached your per after you have acquired your first uh, primordial spirit cultivator though, things are a, a lot easier there because then you're able to just grow your agencies by a pawn there. Okay, but since that's not really uh cool and everything, we're going to we're going to do go crazy now. So first, because I'm that angry, it's time to eat some some nasty stuff. A alien eat poop, Bangju eat poop. If you just think that I've lost my mind, you're possibly right. But it's also something else, and uh, I don't know how a normal decent human being should ever come up with that idea. But you will need this to. Complete the adventures at Vivern Pool. So before you go to Vivern Pool, before you enter the uh, adventure area of Vivern Pool, let everybody to who goes over there eat some poop. Yes, it's for the best of you guys, of your guys. All right. So uh, disaster relief, four hundred. So I think this time we we are in a good spot, or are we? I don't know, 400? 20 times 20 is also 400, so we're lacking 800 points. Oh, we're lacking 200 points. Gosh, I hate this. Alien who I was hurt. Okay. So I'm waiting for Bangju to arrive at this place now too. There we go. So now we're at Vivern Pool. Let's enter this place. I want to check out why Halion is hurting. Pretty sure she's bloated from all the poop. Yeah, bloating. We'll fully recover in. Okay. So this is yet another uh, your your uh, your usual adventure uh, area here. So. Now, the dog. Okay. is how? Okay. Oh, there. 
So it's attacking Hellion. Can't accept that. Should be attacking my dog now. Okay. Now, let's kill that thing. Alright. So, demon hunting is, of course, something you can always do. There's never anything wrong with demon hunting. Demon hunting is profitable, and you, you really can get a lot out of that. So, here's a couple of red ginseng roots. I definitely want them to. Red ginseng is really a valuable material to grow your uh, outer, dis uh, your inner and outer disciples. You can use it to let your uh, outer disciples grow foundation quicker, and also eating that stuff increases your maximum chi amount by a certain uh, by a certain value. It's one of the weaker uh, max chi increasers. The um, what's it called? The Earth Flux, for example, is a way stronger way of increasing your maximum chi, but this works as well. And usually you do everything of these, so... Oh, we forgot to slaughter that gluttonous howl thing. There we go. Alrighty, so... You might be still wondering what this all has to do with the poop we just uh, consumed before we entered this place. I'm pretty sure you guys didn't forget, don't you? So, neither did I. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to collect whatever we want to collect. Let's see, that's all, all small stacks. I do want to collect the red ginseng there. Alright, and here's this Steely of Dragon. Now let's let Bangju interact. And here we go. Interact. Not bad, you've done well by the looks of it. Come put me to the test. So, here's the thing. You can only enter this room if you have eaten poop before. I don't know what kind of twisted humor the, de the, the developers have, or... Well, if that's some Chinese cultural thing that I think that I don't know anything about that, but that's the deal. But we find in here dragon feces and gather chi 90 range 3. This stuff is chi gathering material from the heavens. From the heavens, but from somewhere else there. Anywho. You also find some two, two pretty powerful uh, poop pile artifacts, which are also worth collecting. Because there's a funny side effect about uh, attacking your enemy with poop. Because poop stinks, in case you didn't know that, now you do. Because of that, your enemy will ultimately pass out if you, f if you knock him over with a poop pile artifact off on the you know. They gain a uh, debuff due to that, and uh, yeah, that's that's the poop story. That's why you do that. And also, as you notice here, I am collecting quite a lot of things, and that's why I brought two cultivators because at under no circumstances <laughs> to leave behind any of these poop piles. They're just too powerful. There we go. Excursion and dragon poop completed. Don't ask me what these guys were thinking when they did that. But yeah. Vernpool. Now you know how this is done. <laughs> I still think this is one of the weirdest, weirdest things about this game. That I promise I, I don't have too many weirder things about this game in store, okay? You're more, you're less useful than a grain of sand. Oh, Zhang Bei. That's so... These guys are so nice to me. They really know how to pep talk. Alright. So, back home with our new trophies. We will redecorate our steel or metal cultivation room. I mean, I'm pretty sure that Hellion doesn't like the new decorations, but little do I care. 
So the real good news about this stuff is that it has a decently high range there. So we can put it onto, onto the outer pedestals. So here. It's really important that you uh, place these immediately because a certain dog in your uh, in your sect loves to yeah. I don't I don't complete this sentence. There there have been accidents where dragon feces piles haven't been found anymore after they are not put onto pedestals immediately. So Riverbank Plains is now completed so we can now put up the policy and the agency here so we of course go for charity and the first thing i'll do is i'll put up fields on every single area where it is doable because fields are just that powerful i ran out of wood actually do i have wood anywhere no so we're going to chop up some timber all by ourselves i mean luckily we do have some trees here so the great desert is now also completed let's put them on charity and wait until we have enough timber to build things over there so bangju is going back coming back home now too and here we go these uh, dragon feces piles upgrade your cultivation chamber massively. Basically, I've seen people that rush towards uh, river and pool as quick as possible due to exactly that reason. Because it's just uh, a, a huge freebie, you know? One of the biggest freebies you can get. Because uh, some poop is really not that hard to acquire. All right. Enough about these shitty topics. So, Alien now is on her way to break brewing soon. Season is reaching five stars day by day. Now, let's see. Is there anything she still can learn? We acquired a quite decent amount of inspiration out of the last transcription well, let's see what we can learn there was one new way of uh, increasing our chi by 1000 we can now also learn a crap ton of new talismans but not yet not interested in that so the breakthrough incantation is something I'd really love to learn someday too but now is not the time all right let's study the cloudy confluence then Let's see. Yeah, another uh, 1,000 points of chi plus awesome. Okay, let's see what can Bongju do. Nothing, I think. It's really sad that I have to wait for her until summer. There's not really much I can do. She's a good adventure drone, and if that happens to you, and that you don't know what to do with your cultivator for the time being, I like to send them on numerous times adventures to somewhere like Mount Baron, where they can just gather resources for me that are ultimately just needed. I mean, cotton is basically only money. All I'm doing is I'm sending them to earn money for me. Also, cheap exploration trick here, when you order your people to chop trees at the border of the line of sight, this is an indirect way of exploring these places, because they will explore while they chop down. You want to eat dragon feces. No, bad dog. You are not allowed to eat dragon feces. There we go. Okay, so I don't have any uh, any haulers anymore, so let's change that. And also, City of Abundance sent me a couple of recruits. Only five people came. Oh my god! Yeah, this got, this place is not really not really set up yet. So wow, really good stats. She sends eight, 
Stats are mediocre. Luck is pretty okay. Let's uh, let's recruit her, nevertheless. And let's see, who's good with social? Do we have anybody here? Social con here. Well, level 11 on social, okay. Level 10 on social. Level 8 on crafting, 14 on crafting. Well, we're going to recruit them all for now. It's only five people. It's not really much. Okay. So. Riverbank Plains. Here we go. So, Riverbank Plains now produces enough food for a lot of different uh, agencies and we see here right now we're consuming a wee bit more wheat than we're producing but that's okay same goes for our brownstone but as far as i can say we still have more than enough brownstone available to do to get this job done so no problem at this front okay so this area now here is uh, also completed i wanted to talk about that now too so I'm pretty sure you guys can already figure what we're going to do. We're going to just uh, slap in a couple of boring pedestals here and uh, then they're going to hold a couple of heating items here. So I'm going to do one per corner. Why not? The poopy room is now completed. And there's another thing I want to do as soon as Zuruji is back. Alright. So, now we can check out this room here is only at minus 24 degree. Of course, nothing grows here. So we're just going to place a couple of beast blood bottles. Let's take three for now. And then we'll have to wait until they have the, the correct temperature. This is a wee bit annoying because you will have to do this again and again. And you you can't really do anything to speed that, to automate that, not as far as I know. So Waybin, I'm going to bring you into the uh, rank of an abbot. And the other folks, well... This guy has interesting stats, but... She sends wise, they're all bloody scrubs. So, Waybin will be uh, recruited for a new um, abbot, and the other folks will just uh, be left to die here. This is quite cruel, I know, I know. But life is cruel. Welcome, Waybin. You see, now they're uh, suffering from frostbites. The Soul Pearl might be not enough to cool the room down to a absolutely deadly temperature. But it's enough to make it uncomfortable as heck. So I think it is enough now to to free to kill people at, during during daytime, at nighttime, but not enough daytime, not enough to, for during daytime war. Well, okay, no temperature tolerance is so way lower than that. Okay, so what happens then after uh, some samsara pearl with fire origin? Oh no. They'll just drop some Angus Soul Gems. Ironically, you not only will use these Angus Soul Gems for... Um, for upgrading, you can also make a lot of money with these if you want to. Okay, so let's see what we can trade. For two street treasure items are worthless. So... As I, I just wanted to show you, Beast Blood has a pricing of 60, and Earth Flux has even a pricing of 300. So if you have people that can pluck that stuff safely for you, this is a nice source of income. Angus Soul Gems go for 35 soul, uh, Spirit Stones each, so your, your Hellgate can be quite profitable. You just gain one per dead person. And in comparison, the Serenity Soul Gem only sells for two. So... There you have it. Now we're going to sell away the loot from the attackers, like I always do, because it's just such a good way. Here are the bracelets we did in the economics episode, seven spirit stones each. We spent half a spirit stone 
and get a seven out of that. That's a net gain of six point five per uh, per bracelet. Not too bad, eh? So beyond that, of course, we're going to sell a couple of other rubbish things, and of course, check out the artifacts here. There are twenty spirit stones each. You can just go there and upgrade a nearly worthless item into something which gives you 20, uh, 20 spirit stones. Firecrackers, by the way, always sell all but one because, you know, what, what would you want with more of them? Okay, wonderful. We got us some money again. That's good. I'm going to keep that money for now because of the fact that we're not done with our expansion yet. I was just waiting until I have money. It did, it did bug me a lot that we weren't able to do this farm and chopping too properly, you know. Usually I do insist on giving my, giving my people there um, some spirit stones, but well. Wasn't possible this time. All right, so Halion now is almost at the preferable stage for the breakthrough. So we already know what's going to be our next episode's main topic, and that's trying to go for a solid golden core. Not perfect golden core, but a solid one. So guys, I hope that was informational. I know we were a little bit all over the place. The Vivern Pool adventure was certainly the uh, main attraction here and check this out our cotton is now growing in winter we have a comfy 14 degree temperature inside here while outside it's minus 18 degree this is how you can do farming in winter too and questions go down there leave a thumbs up if you want to i'd be super happy if you did and of course check out my channel where i do daily content for you guys subscribe and turn on the bell if you want to stay posted and last but not least i usually don't say that often but i want to put it in here into this video again in the description box down there are also links for direct support for my project since i do all my content for free and i will always do my work for free it'd be super awesome if you guys would consider giving me a helping hand if you don't know one thing you also help a ton by just watching these videos and listen to me and all these things you're awesome stay like that and catch you guys next time bye bye